started VBS, we met Surfer Julie, and Surfer Julie had some challenges. Basically, she kept trying to build her sandcastle, and it kept falling down. She kept having problem after problem after problem. And we really looked at the story that Jesus told about building on a firm foundation. So I'm going to have my son Jacob come up. Jake is going to build a tower for me while I read this passage. Now, if you have your Bible with you, Jake, say hi to everyone. Wave. He's really happy, I promise. So we are going to be in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24, and we're going to be on page 1478 of that blue Bible. You can go ahead and build. There you go. It says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Jake, show everyone your tower. What happened? It broke. It didn't have a foundation, right? It didn't have the bottom of it. Why don't you go ahead and try and build it again? Let's see what happens. Okay. So like I said, foundations matter. Kids learn at a very early age how to build a tower, how to make it the strongest and biggest tower that they can make. I have two little kids and their favorite thing is knocking down each other's towers. And so they have to build them strong. Otherwise, brother's going to come by and knock it down. And so he has lots of practice in building strong towers. Now, like I said, surfer Julie really had a rough time with us. She came in, she had these great plans of a surf mansion on the beach. She wanted to wake up every morning and go surf the waves. And every morning she would wake up and her surf castle was knocked down. And she lost her porch at one point. She did bring in blow up furniture, which was pretty fun. I mean, at least she thought of everything in that moment. But every time, her mansion knocked down. So why do foundations matter? Jake, hold up your blocks. Right? Why why did it not fall down? Because it had a foundation. Good job, buddy. You can go sit down. Thank you. Give Jake a round of applause. He's going to tell me later, Mom, I'm never doing this again. (laughs) So why do foundations matter? Why does it matter that we build our foundation on God? That was the goal of this week. How do we build our foundation on God? So on Monday, our kids learned from Arthur the seagull here that God keeps his promises. Whoa. Look at all of you. I'm so impressed. Let's try that again. God keeps his promises. Whoa, good job. So why is that important? Why is God keeping his promises so important for us? Jesus tells us in the beginning of his parable, he says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. Therefore, Jesus, when Jesus says, therefore, He is making you a promise. He is promising you that if you listen to his words just like you are right now and you put them into practice, then you will build your house on him. You will have that strong foundation. So on Monday, our kids learned the story of Noah. Now, Noah is a very common story. Most little kids learn that story the very first time, 
when they're two years old, they can tell you that God made a rainbow in the sky. But let's walk through what happened with uh, Noah really fast. He says, I am going, God says, I am going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. But then the story continues and it says, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your wives' sons. So first, God told Noah what to do, right? And then God made a promise to Noah. And then Noah did this when we jump down to verse 22. It says, Noah did everything just as God commanded him to do. Noah trusted God's promise. Noah knew that God was going to keep his word, so he did what God commanded him to do. He trusted his promise. So first, God keeps his promise. Whoa. Oh, see, I caught you off guard on that one. Let's see if we get this next one. Snappy the crab told us that God is all powerful. Whoa, good job, everybody. So God is all powerful. So first we know that God keeps his promises and then we know that he is all powerful. Now, on Tuesday, we learned the story of Moses. And many of the times that we talk about the story of Moses, we say, when Moses parted the Red Sea, But you know what? Moses isn't the one who parted the Red Sea, was he? When we read in Exodus 14, it says Moses stretched out his hands. Can you guys stretch out your hands like me? Good job. He stretched out his hands. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong wind and turned it to dry land. The waters were divided. So who did the work in this story? Was it Moses? Or was it the Lord? It was the Lord. It says the Lord separated the seas, not Moses. Moses did what God commanded him to do, but God did the work because God is all powerful. Yes! Oh, you guys just made my day. I'm done. That was incredible. Good job, everybody. So when we go through what Jesus was teaching in this parable, it says the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had a foundation on the rock. It had a foundation knowing that God will keep his promises, that God is all powerful, that he, wait, I'm not there. God keeps his promises. Whoa. Okay. Next one. God is all powerful. Whoa. Got a new one for you. God is forgiving. This is Bubbles the Orca. Now, Bubbles the Orca on Wednesday taught us the story of Jonah. Now, if you're not familiar with the story of Jonah, Jonah basically did the exact opposite of what God wanted him to do. He, God said, go do this, and Jonah went, nope, I'm going that way. And he ran as far away as he possibly could. We should never run away from God. Right, we should never run away from God, but Jonah did, right? And so in Jonah chapter three, it says this, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. God gave Jonah a second chance because you know what? Sometimes we're not going to do what God asks us to do, right? Sometimes we're going to make a mistake, but God's going to give us that second chance. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message I give to you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. That's who God is when we have our foundation on him, when we know that his promises are true, that he is all powerful. But you know what? Sometimes we're gonna make mistakes. Sometimes we're going to get off track. And then we know that God is forgiving. Whoa, right? 
That's who God is. That is who he is coming to you saying. He is saying that I love you. I am here for you. And I forgive you. I forgive you all the things that you have ever done wrong, every bad choice you have ever made. You can come to Jesus' feet and say, I'm sorry. And he will take you back with open arms, loving you, saying, it's okay. Here's a second chance. Trust me. So on Thursday, our kids learned that God called me. Whoa. Kids, turn to your parents, adults, turn to your neighbor and say, God called me. He called me, he called you to be a part of his story. On Thursday, our kids learned about Jesus calling his first disciples and what that looked like. Now, Jesus didn't go up to the fishermen and say, tell me everything you've done in your life. Tell me all of the good parts, all the bad parts. He didn't ask for their resume. He didn't ask for what they're good at. He didn't say, well, how good are you at those VBS games that you played this last week? No. Jesus came to them and said this. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come and follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Jesus came to them and said, come, come follow me. I love you, I have forgiven you, and I am coming to you right now. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you are two years old or 90 years old. God is coming to you right now and calling you to be a part of his story. All of you. So first, God keeps his promises and Whoa, you guys, you're so good. I can't even kept, keep up with you all. Okay, God keeps his promises. Whoa. God is all powerful. Whoa. God forgives me. Whoa. And God calls me. So why does it all matter? Why does building that foundation matter? Why is it so important? It's because God is in control. Whoa. This is Sandy the starfish. Now, Sandy the starfish taught us that no matter what we're facing in life, no matter how hard things may be, whether kids, you're going to a new school, meeting new friends, parents, if you're starting a new job, or are scared, or don't know what's going on, and something is bothering you, our foundation is built on the fact that God is in control of all things. Whoa. So on Friday, our kids learned the story of the storm on the sea, and the disciples are in this boat, and they are convinced that they're going to die. They are convinced that these huge waves crashing into their boat is going to sink it. And Jesus is in the boat, but Jesus is sleeping. And they're sitting there going, we're going to die. What are we going to do? Somebody needs to do something. So they go and they woke up Jesus. And Jesus said this to them. You of little faith, why are you so afraid. Why are you so afraid? Think for a second about the things in life that scare you. I know for my kids, sometimes the dark scares them because they can't see something or they have bad nightmares and that will scare them. Parents, we have things in our lives that scare us. But why are we so afraid? 
What is that thing in your life that you are holding back? Parents, I am talking to you right now. What is that thing in your life that seems impossible? That seems like you're going to drown on the sea? And God is saying to you, why are you so afraid? I am here. I am with you. I am in control. Build your foundation on me because I will always keep my promises to you. I am all powerful. Whoa. I will forgive you time and time again. And I am calling you to be a part of my story. Jesus is asking you to be a part of his story, to let go of those fears, to let go of those worries and step into his story because he loves you that much. That's what it means to build our foundation on Christ. That is what our kids learned at VBS this week. That they can step confidently into this world, knowing that no matter what, God is in control. Let's pray. Father God, Jesus, thank you for the joy and the laughter of this past week, God. God, you did incredible things. You moved in incredible ways. God, I pray for anyone in this room that is facing something that scares them. I pray that you let them know who you are. You let them rest on the foundation of your promises and of your peace, Lord. God, you are so good, and we love you so much. We say these things in Jesus' name. Amen.